I came over to my table saw to make this simple rip and I made a number of mistakes all at the same time. And I want to share this because number one, it could have ended a lot worse. I could have cut my fingers off, could have cut into my hand, um, could have taken the kickback to the chest or to the hand or something like that, could have been a lot worse. So this is a really educational teaching moment here. But anyways, I go to make this half inch rip on this piece of one by and for probably at least the last four months, if not six months, I've been fighting the fence on my DeWalt table saw. Now I think the DeWalt table saws are great. I think the rack and pinion fence system is great. And in general, it does a really good job of keeping this fence running parallel to the blade. I actually sold my old saw stop table saw because I didn't like the fence. It was one of the reasons I didn't like that saw, but the fence did not lock on the back. So I felt it deflected too much. Didn't care for it. Anyways, whenever you have the back of your fence towed in more than the front, whenever you get to the end of your cut, your piece is going to be pinching on the blade. There's going to be binding and friction happening, and you're going to feel tension as you try and push that piece through. That's a bad sign. Now you can alleviate that if you have a, a riving knife installed on your table saw, because that riving knife will help take off some of that pressure. So you might not notice that your fence is out as much as it actually is. But in my case, I had my riving knife off. So as I was pushing this piece through, I got to the end and all of a sudden there was a huge amount of pressure right there, more than it had been in the past. Let me just go ahead and make this rip so I can show you exactly what happened. As I was pushing this piece through, the first mistake I made was I had my blade set way too high. I had just been doing something where I needed it set higher and I didn't adjust it down. That could have cost me dearly if I would have got my hand in the saw as the more blade you have sticking out, the more blade there is to cut things off. Generally, you always want to have your blade slightly higher than the workpiece you're working on. So to be ripping a one by, this blade was way too high. As I was going through the cut, I've also made the mistake that I haven't had my table saw outfeed fence adjusted really well. It had really been bothering me. And sometimes the saw would get bumped, which would then make my outfeed table higher than my actual table saw table. That's a huge danger also because then once you start getting through your cut, all of a sudden you bump up against your outfeed table like this, and you've got a dangerous situation also where you could get distracted or who knows what could happen. So I had that going on. I pushed the piece through and I can feel the tension building the further I got along. Um, even now, I think my fence is still a little bit off after I fixed it but I was pushing it through and I was using my push stick and all of a sudden there was a lot of pressure there. I could feel the pressure. I could feel that things weren't right with my outfeed table and I didn't have my riving knife installed. So there was no help for me as uh, this piece started to bind up. I had a decision to make either I'm going to keep pushing and I'm going to put my hand directly over this blade as I exert a bunch of pressure to try and push this piece through, or I'm going to abort mission. So what I ended up doing, I took the pressure off. I took my hand back. I took the push stick off. Now at that point, there is nothing to keep that piece held down. And if you don't know this, you can have a piece of wood ride up onto the top of the saw blade. And whenever that happens, these teeth 
will actually grab into a piece of wood. They will literally grab a hold of it and that's where you get kickback. And it happens in a, a fraction of a fraction of a second. So all of a sudden, I took my hand off, I moved back out of the way, that's important too, that way I didn't take it right in the chest, but I moved back out of the way and in an instant, that piece rode up onto there, the blade grabbed it, and this thing turned into a wood missile. So you guessed it, there's my table saw, and here's the window behind it. So the piece shot straight back, barely hit the window. If I would have been two inches lower, it would have been all right. But we got a nice new Anderson window here, cracked the first pane of glass, thankfully didn't go through the second, but uh, so now I've got a broken window to replace here. And with lead times, what they are right now, you know how much of a disaster that is. So this leads me to my last and final mistake. I had a window positioned directly behind the table saw, which is a big no-no. Now I've made tens of thousands of cuts on the table saw over the course of my career. I can only remember having kickback less than a handful of times and it was always due to neglect on my part. If you don't want to experience kickback, the best way to not have that happen is simply to use a riving knife. Um, the other thing is just make sure your fence is adjusted correctly, and that is gonna reduce 99% of the kickback that is ever going to occur. Probably almost all the kickback, 99.9%. .9%. But as soon as you take that riving knife off of the saw, you open up the potential for the back end of that saw blade to catch and grab a hold of your workpiece and send it flying. So moral of the story is number one, make sure your table saw outfeed is set up correctly. Number two, if your fence gets out of calibration, fix it, get it running parallel again, get it running correctly. Number three, always have a riving knife installed unless you're doing an operation that requires you to remove it. And number four, if at all possible, position your table saw somewhere where you don't have a glass window directly behind it or in an area where there's other humans or something that could get hurt behind the table saw. So I shared this story on Instagram and it was amazing how many comments I got back from guys who have done the same thing over the years. So hopefully this video helps some of you out there not to make the same mistake that I did here. Um, I hate stuff like this, work so hard not to uh, have stuff go wrong and to, to make my job as um, smooth for the builder as possible, but then to make that call and say that, hey, I broke a window with my table saw was very humbling. But live and learn, we're gonna move on and uh, it'll continue to be humbling because right now the wait time on windows, as you know, is absolutely obscene. So hopefully we can get this replacement soon, but thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something and stay safe out there. Take care of your table saw, use a riving knife and keep it calibrated. We'll see you on the next video.